Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Cryptic Crossword. <clears throat> the New York Times uh, published published a new one a week or two ago, about a week, a, a couple weeks, I guess. Um, so for a change, we're not doing one from like 2016 or whatever. Um, I just finished recording some chess where I was losing all my games, and so I thought, wouldn't it be nice to do something else that I'm mediocre at? So here we are, <laughs> Cryptic Crossword. Um, <clears throat> reminder. For those of you who are not familiar with cryptic crosswords, although I don't know, like I don't know, such people might someday watch this video. It's like an American crossword, but um, the clues are given in the way that the, the the answers are given to you is different. Each clue gives you the answer twice, once as an oblique definition and once as some kind of wordplay. There's an invisible divider in each clue, separating the two ways it gives you the answer, and you have to figure out what that is and and uh, work out the wordplay and and or the definition to get you the answer. So pop fusses around. Is this, yeah, this will be soda, right? Um, pop is a word for soda, and a, a fuss is an ado. And so multiple fusses would be ados, and the whole thing is being turned around. So in this case, I didn't see the, I, I got it from the definition. I was like, okay, pop is, what's a four letter word for pop? Soda, I guess. And then try to work out, can I make the wordplay make sense? Sometimes you go in the other direction. Trumpet blast that announced evil woman in a horror movie. Two five-letter words. Uh, a trumpet blast might be some sort of bugle thing? I don't know. Or maybe trumpet is the definition, a five-letter word for some kind of trumpet. Something bugle, brass bugle. I don't know. I don't, I don't see what to do with that. Dappled horse galloped around ring. Ah, this is a roan, which is a kind of horse. I guess a dappled one and not much of a horse expert. Um, but I saw a round ring, and ring... One thing ring could be is just an O, and something you could write around ring. Well, what would be a word for gallops that you could fit around ring in just four letters? Ran. So roan and ran around O. Trees shipmates put in certain columns. Trees. S T R T is a letter that fits well here. I don't know what it would mean necessarily. Sortie is kind of like shipmates would. I don't know. A sortie is something ship. Yeah. Sortie is like a military, like a skirmish, right? So it's not really related to shipmates. Pirates might have a sortie, I guess. Put in certain columns, so like sorting, right? Sorts, but it's the wrong tense. I'm not sure. Uh, speaking of not being sure, a reminder that I usually say in these cryptics is that I'm not good enough at them to finish them with anything like 100% uh, reliability. So we're likely going to have to end up uh, asking for some help uh, the, from hint for hints. Loaded deck shuffled with no winners. Okay. Oh, that reminds me. Put in, no, put certain, I thought it was certain order. That might be an anagram clue, but it's not. Put in certain columns. Um, so shuffled, very many, at least in the New York Times, uh, cryptic clues, uh, anagrams are not uncommon. And shuffled can be, oh, anagram something. So you look around, you see shuffled. It's a 10 letter answer. Is there like 10 letters that you could shuffle easily? Yes, loaded deck. So this, and also we have a D and an A, which signals even more strongly. So the wordplay is that um, we're supposed to rearrange the letters in a loaded deck somehow. And it should mean with no winners. Dead locked should be a loaded deck, and that means with no winners. OK. Oh, we already looked at this, right? Yeah. Town clothes that aren't meant to show red hues.
Uh, town could be the definition. It could just be the name of some town that somehow this wordplay works. It's a little weird. The definition could also be red hues. Like, how long is carnations? Ten letters. Is there some way I could make this wordplay work? Um, so carnation is is a color, right? It's not just um, flower. Carnation color. Like, is 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 a carnation actually a color? Let's, let's ask Merriam-Webster. Carnation. One, a plant. Two, a moderate red. Three, archaic, the variable color of human flesh. Wow, okay. Way to get a little morbid there. I don't know, not morbid. Flesh could just mean like your actual skin. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. So, is there some way this could mean town clothes that aren't meant to show? I don't see any way that makes sense. Well, let's look at some crosses and see if maybe the O and the S look good or bad. Back story recited. So, I imagine we're meant to write a story backwards and it should mean recited. There's, there's like red, R-E-A-D, could mean recited. That's sort of related to story, but not to backstory. Um, there's rote, R-O-T-E, which could mean recited. But writing that backwards, you get etor. It doesn't really have anything to do with backstory, so it doesn't look very good. Leaderless phantom army. Okay, so this will be a host. Um... It makes sense that this ends with an S, because red hues, right? Uh, why is this host? Because a phantom is a ghost, and a leaderless phantom is a host, and an army can be called a host. So the army is the definition. Leaderless phantom is the wordplay. Okay. Furniture becomes larger when you remove one piece. Longer, I'm sorry, not larger. Huh. Tough to see where to split the wordplay and the definition here. Furniture that becomes longer. Could be a recliner? But, like, what does when you remove one piece have to do with it? And also, recliner doesn't fit. Um... Yeah, mysterious. How about this one? Fleek pouring liquid. An in-group is a clique. Two dash five. So in dash group, I guess? But what does pouring liquid have to do with group? What about in crowd? The in crowd is kind of clique. But that also doesn't really look like pouring liquid. I think this has to be in group. I just don't understand why yet. And I'm hopeful that the crosses I get will... Um, reinforce my belief that it's in group. So now this doesn't look like carnations. Aren't supposed to show red hues. Very strange. Gust of air attacks loosely knotted neckwear. So loosely can be an anagram indicator. Um, there's nothing around here that's 11 letters. 
but you might, for example, you might, you know, re replace gust of air with breeze and then breeze attacks. If that were 11 letters, maybe you could re anagram that. It's not, but like some, something like that could make loosely an anagram indicator. Loosely. So loosely kind of has to be part of the definition. Uh, sorry, the wordplay, not the definition. Because like loosely knotted neckwear is just very weird. <laughs> I don't know. And gust of air attacks loosely. There's no way it can be part of the, the definition that I can see. Um, so like neckwear could be a tie or a scarf. We have um, seven letters here. So we would want a four letter word if we could rearrange knotted. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. OK, back to the acrosses. Western jazz man's boots. Wellington's. Those are those are boots in. Uh, it's what the, the English call. I'm not sure exactly galoshes or boots in general. I'm not sure what exactly are wellies. So Wellington boots are, it was a type of, yeah, they look like galoshes to me. Um, is there a difference between Wellingtons versus galoshes? Usually called rubber boots, galoshes, mud boots, okay. Huh. How, um, yeah, okay. So is, is what, is galoshes a regional thing? Are there people watching this who are like, what the hell are you talking about with galoshes? Galoshes, also known as Dickerson, Dickerson's gumshoes, rubbers, or overshoes. Sorry, I guess I could show you guys this, couldn't I? A type of rubber boot that is slipped over shoes. Oh, interesting. In the United States, galoshes may be used interchangeably with boot. Although, to me, it indicates a particular kind of boot, I think. In the United Kingdom, it's an overshoe made of weatherproof material to protect a more vulnerable shoe underneath. Huh. Wood foot. Fascinating. Okay, anyway, back to real life here. That's... Wellingtons are kind of like that. Um, and I guess that must have been a Western jazz man. There must have been someone, some Western jazz man named Wellington. And something that is Wellingtons is a Western jazz man's thing. So straw? Trees? Screw? Straw and screw are like almost the only things you can put there. Still don't know though. Strew, I guess. Oh. Strew about? I don't know, that doesn't make any sense. Cause strew is like what uh <laughs> how do you describe what strew means? It means to like kind of cast around haphazardly, right? Um, and it is its own past tense, so I don't know. Anyway, I'm not sure. But we have we have an I now. Let's work on these. Said, I adore snowy locale in Britain. So I think said is probably telling me to mishear something. I love, I don't know. Said, I adore. And then maybe there's a snowy locale in Britain. Or I adore snowy, and then there's a locale in Britain. I don't know. How about this thing with a G? G-E-R? That's something that you might see somehow. As like some kind of furniture. I don't know. Don't see anything obvious going on. Corn oil stirred vividly. 
So corn oil is seven letters, stirred is an anagram. We're looking for something that means vividly, apparently. You have a C here, which reinforces that belief about stirred. Um, on, in, in, in color means vividly. What the heck? Straw, screw, so weird. Okay, now this has got to be an E, like almost certainly, but I'll pencil it. Now we have an I L. Ooh, Isle of something. I love is I adore. If you mishear it, you might think someone's saying Isle of, not I love. Snowy, white. Something snowy is white. And the Isle of Wight is a locale in Britain. Okay, how about this P? Go through repaved ground. Pass by? Go through... Repaved? I don't know. Opening in a mask, I complete audibly. Okay, so audibly is another, just like mishearing for Isle of Wight. Um, we're supposed to mishear something I complete, probably. I, an eye hole is a, an opening in a mask, and I complete could be I whole with a W. Okay, so we now have all the crosses we're going to get for this, and I still have no idea. Straw piles? <laughs> Screw. Strew. Trees. What the hell is trees doing here? Is there something called like straw pines? Well, okay, I mean, it's got, like, pines, right? Put in certain columns. Ah! Okay, so maybe I can work out the definition through the wordplay. If I say shipmates, they're being put in something, some kind of columns. Lines, maybe? Not... What are, what are shipmates? A crew, right? Yes, shipmates are a crew. And certain columns are spines, specifically spinal columns. So apparently there's a tree called the screw pine, and so the plural of that would be screw pines. Okay. This is one thing that I like about cryptics, is that they can get really specific with the definitions. Like, I don't think there's any clue in the universe where in a normal American crossword, the answer would be, oh, of course, it's screw pines, right? Um, the other thing I like about cryptics, well, aside from the cool, like, back and forth between wordplay and definition, is that they can be silly with the, with the, the clues. They, they can write silly clues. I haven't seen that many yet. Um... Leaderless Phantom Army, it's kind of a fun clue, right? It, it, it calls to mind this idea of a bunch of ghosts just uh, forming an army with nobody to tell them what to do. They're just roaming everywhere. I don't know. You can't, you can't do that with uh, crosswords where the definition is what matters. A red part of Appalachian timber. Now, this A is important. Um... Generally speaking, they're not supposed to include words that don't change the, the clue at all. Um, so red part of Appalachian timber looks like it means basically the same thing. So if they put A here, it's supposed to be a meaningful part of the wordplay, usually the letter A, or possibly an, or one. Um, 
sadly, I don't really know what I'm looking for here. A red. I don't know. Wild actress won trophies after adaptation. I notice that one trophies is 11 letters. Yes. And after adaptation, I thought might be some kind of anagram in, anagram indicator saying, oh, just adapt, um, adapt the letters into a different order. And indeed, one trophies, by the way, the W here also indicates, oh, maybe, maybe that's important, right? One trophies, it's 11 letters and anagrams to Witherspoon. I assume she played in something called Wild. Let's just look that up here. Um, Wild Witherspoon. Wild is a film from 2014. Um, looking, yeah, it stars Reese Witherspoon. There you go. So you learn all kinds of things doing cryptics. Not that I'll remember this, but. Land changed into C. So into C is seven letters. And if we change it, we could rearrange the letters to get something meaning land. We have an ET already. ENT. EN. What would I have left? I O A. I oh, I O A S. Mm. E A T. Land no E S T. What does it mean, land? E-S-T, I would have A-I-O-N? E-A, I have Etians? I have no idea. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not an anagram indicator, but it sure looks like it. Scrooge's characteristic kind of pain with a question mark. So a Scrooge is greed. You know, a characteristic of a Scrooge is greed. Kind of pain. So the question mark, though, I still don't totally understand what a question mark means in a cryptic. Sometimes I've seen it used in cases where they're not quite following the usual rule of ex a, a divider between the wordplay and the definition. There's some blur between the two. Um, let me look it up. Is there some cryptic crossword question mark? Signifies the clue is a pun or uses the meanings of the clue words in some unexpected way. Oh, but that's just talking about ordinary crosswords. Cryptic crossword. The setter is not quite playing by the rules. Okay, here we have one from guardian.co.uk. That's got to be definite, like... Question mark. Well, that doesn't tell me much. Okay, so I don't really know. Not quite playing by the rules. So, kind of pain. Hmm, I don't know. What other... What else is there that would be a Scrooge's characteristic besides greed? I'm not sure exactly. Kingsley gobbles a noodle. I don't know who Kingsley is. Probably an actor or actress. 
maybe a sports player. Pretty much covers everything you should be expected to know. <laughs> the only people in our society who matter. Um, a noodle. Gobbles a. So maybe there's an A in the middle of Kingsley's first name, and the definition is a noodle? What's a four-letter kind of noodle? Udon. Doesn't have an A in it, though. I don't really know a lot of other four-letter noodles. Uh, I guess your noodle is your brain? Yeah. Hmm. Sooner or later... University breaks tie score. Eventually? Yeah, a tie score is an even tally, and that's broken by university, and the whole thing is his U. Um, and then the whole thing means sooner or later. Wear out, yeah, it's just tire. Wear something out is to... Or to wear out is to get tired or to tire, and the rubber part of the car is a tire, so that one's easy. A female Wimbledon winner. I mean, mare is um, four letters that can mean a female. But first of all, it doesn't use the A, so it's a little suspicious. And I don't know of any Wimbledon winner named Mare. Hmm. Yeah, don't know. How about this? I have this I now? Not, not really helpful, I don't think. Inventor in hypnotism. Huh. So it's probably inventor is the definition, and in hypnotism, ah, of course. I always miss these. Um, <clears throat> I still haven't solved it yet, by the way, but in can, can mean put something inside something else, but it can also mean just like look inside for four contiguous letters in hypnotism, and you'll get something that means inventor. So we have yipno, panot. Noti, Otis. Otis invented the elevator. Or, well, the safety elevator. They had dangerous elevators, but he invented one that doesn't kill you, uh, basically. They had stuff like Paternosters back then. Not many of those left in the world. Cool word, look it up. Um, I think, well, I don't know. I Yeah, I'm not going to show you guys a video of a Paternoster. It's just an elevator that seems like a really good idea <clears throat> but it's dangerous if misused and not not accessible to people who can't like walk normally for example so that's why we don't use them furniture that becomes longer when you remove one piece still don't really know gust of air attacks loosely knotted neckwear still don't know we, we have two s's which is cool don't know don't know Poop in most uncommon wood <laughs> uh, <clears throat> So probably something ending with E-S-T, I suppose. M the most uncommon of something would be somethingist. Um, and we could just the letters poop in there, perhaps? Something meaning most uncommon, rarest? But then, like, I don't think a rar poopest is really, like, a, a particularly well-known woodland. Um... Yeah, I don't know. We'll pencil this in, but... I'm not really in love with it. Appeal to baseball division's origins. 
I mean, baseball division, there's like the, um, gosh, what are they called? There's like two, there's two of them, right? And then they have the all-star game where they like play against each other. Does that still exist? My knowledge of baseball is all from like 1993. Um, is it the, it's not the A, A, the American League and the, yeah, AL and the NL. So baseball divisions. Origins. ALs. It could end with ALS. It would be baseball divisions. And then we would have to write something that appeals to in front of that. It could also be NLS, but that's pretty hard to, st to stomach, right, as part of a word. Hmm. I mean, I'll pencil that in. Feta is a cheese, not a noodle, so I don't like that idea. All right, we have the A now. Oh, is this the name of a country? Estonia. That's a land. Coolers spilled oily liquid. Hmm, so not an A. Coolers spilled is probably an anagram indicator, and we have an EL here. So, so this is probably O, like one, I'm guessing. Oily liquid. O R E? Oh, S-E is pretty unlikely, right? O-C-E? I'm not aware of anything like that. So if we put an R in, I guess I'd pencil the O as well. Pencil that, I guess. If we put this R in, what would I have left? O... C S or a skull? I'm not aware of any such thing. What if we had S C E? This would have to be like Skarule, which I'm also not aware of. Ugh. Probably gonna need help on this one, sadly. It's not greed, that's interesting. I mean, another characteristic he had was he wasn't into Christmas. He was um, miserly. Uh, well, that kind of just means greedy, but like he was uh, grumpy. Uh, misanthropic. Hmm. A female. Wimbledon winner. Maybe. Could Wimbledon winner be like part of um, the definition? Not just, uh, well, but, but not have to be someone's name. Like an ace is a way to win at Wimbledon. It is a play that might be described as a Wimbledon winner. If you were to, you know, serve well and get an ace. Hmm. All right. Do I have like... Gobble. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely stuff we could still work on. Poopist. <laughs> yeah.
What is this G E R? I, I just have trouble splitting this, really. Furniture. I mean, I'm looking around. I don't. <laughs> I don't think I see anything that ends with G E R. Right. And like, what is that? So like, it should be furniture that becomes longer. I feel like, but I don't know. When you remove one piece. When you remove one, and then the whole definition is peace. Oh, hmm. It's a lounger. Yeah, when you remove one piece, i.e. the letter U, it becomes longer? I feel like they should get rid of that. To be furniture becomes longer when you remove one piece. I think. Anyway, this is the answer. I don't know that I love the clue, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh my god, is this like dungarees or something? We were just looking at clothes before, and dungarees are kind of clothes. It doesn't seem like it quite is, though, right? Obviously, dungarees is too short. It doesn't really have anything to do with red hues. Pung, pung, tung, berg, merg. Mm, this, this could be like an N or an R would be the most common letters to put here. So what about this trumpet blast? Blast that announced evil woman in a horror movie might be a crash? I don't know. Plane crash? Doesn't really make any sense. If we were asked being masked to mishear something, you could you could spell plane crash. It's kind of funny. But I, I don't think it's right here. Hmm. Red hues. What are some red colors? Maroon? I don't know. Go through repaved ground. I don't get it. Pass is to go through. You could rifle through something to go through the documents, for example. Do you go through a ritual or uh, some other kind of, um, I guess ritual is the word, in ceremony? Yeah, that's the word I was thinking of. So what about like a parade? To You can parade through something. I don't know. Part, oh, what if, is it, could it possibly be like part of Appalachian? Could I be like looking inside of Appalachian somehow? I don't think so. Timber. 
Timber is wood, lumber, a red, part of Appalachian, APP. Don't know. Stinginess. I just needed more synonyms. And uh, a characteristic, I'm oh, sorry, kind of pain could be stinginess. Okay. So now we have this S. That should be useful, right? I'm still not sure what's going on here. I guess a. S mm, no, I thought maybe a sow, S O W, is a is a female pig, and so a sow, but not a so. A she. Oh! A she is a female, and a Wimbledon winner is Ash, of course. Anytime they talk about tennis, it's always Ash. Um, Coolers spilled oily liquid. Well, this must be... An O there. There's really no other letter that could go here. And so what do we have left? C O R? Creosol? I thought that had an E at the end. I'm going to look on Merriam Webster again. Creosol. I, I guess not. If you spell with an E, it's like, that's not in the dictionary. Okay. A colorless aromatic phenol, and it even gives you the chemical formula, CH3O, and then CH3 again, but in parentheses? I don't, I like barely took a chemistry class at all, so I'm not totally sure of the importance of, like, why is this grouped? That's so weird. It doesn't need to be grouped here. So this is indicating something about how it bonds to its neighbors, like the C6 or whatever? Huh. Okay, anyway. Obtained from beechwood tar. There you go. Creosol. So now we get this. This C was a surprise to me. A red part of Appalachian timber. A red. So are we looking for a shade of red that starts with C? I think so, but I don't know what it could be. Huh? Gust of air attacks loosely knotted neckwear. Tie. A tie is neckwear. Knotted neckwear. But it ends with an S. It's so bizarre. And like with this, I feel like I should be able to get somewhere with this. But I don't know much about horror movies. I don't really watch them. So if this is a reference to some particular evil woman, I don't know which one it is. What are famous horror movies? Is The Shining a horror movie? Maybe. I've never seen it, by the way. Um, trumpet blast. Uh, 
Ugh. I don't know this Kingsley or the Noodle. Back story. So yarn is a story. It's not really anything backward. A tail is a story. You write that backwards. Does anything good happen? No. Said as you recited, you read. Uh, really no idea what to do with this. I think it has to be like rarest. Oh, there's a, a woodland is a forest, of course. Oh, hang on. Yeah, okay. So, if we think rarest, is okay so why does this work so if, if, if something is in most uncommon we have r a r e s t and there's a forest so where's the where's the poop <laughs> info oh man there's it's a weird slangy thing but yeah you can yeah, poop can mean information. It's just like super weird and nobody says it and hasn't said it since like the 1920s. Um, let's just look that up for clarity here. Poop info slang. Uh, yeah, entry six of six in Merriam-Webster. Information scoop. They don't even say it's archaic, but sure. Okay, well, this got us some some words for sure, or some some letters. I don't know what to do with this still. Go through repaved ground. So prepare kind of fits here? I don't really see how it fits with the clue, but it's a word that fits. Go through. Repaved is seven letters long. Oh, you know what? Ground could be an anagram indicator. I didn't even think of that, but yeah, like ground beef is kind of squished around and, and, and moved in various ways. So maybe we're looking for an anagram for repaved that means go through. That would be like pre predav predave Preva pervade means to go through. I see. Okay, now I have an e over here.
So I think origins should be the definition. And appeal to baseball divisions should be the wordplay, because there's no other way to explain how it ends with an S. Origins. E-N, sorry, like T-A-L-S kind of fits here as like a letter that makes the word make sense. N-T-A-L's. You could almost fit Orientals in here, right? O R I E N. You can't actually fit it, and I don't know if it would quite be the right definition. And anyway, anyway, like it wouldn't appeal to, like I don't know. Seem, I don't know. Oh, appeal doesn't have to mean like to look good to. It could mean like to. You know, you, you appeal to someone's sense of justice, as in to, like, ask for help. Hmm. Appeal to. Depend on. Dependence? No. Rely on? You appeal to something, you kind of rely on it in a way? But here's the thing. If we think it ends with ALS as baseball divisions, then appeal to has to end here, not on the end. So we want a T or a D here, probably. Appeal to. Oh, I'm just mad that this one's going to get away from me because I feel like I could get it. I have enough crosses and, and ideas. Per per perennials? It does actually fit. But I don't see what it has to do with appeal to. But it does point out that you could put an I here. The problem is, like, how does it something up? And, yeah, is it, if there's, like, a word split here, an I at the end of a word is very unusual in English. I don't know. And a red part onifer? I mean, the N is in the wrong place for that. A red. Car. I mean, carnations are red. We had that idea before. It's, it was wrong then, it's wrong now. We have this R now, I guess. Maybe that helps with this. So there's scarfs, right? C, oh no, SCR doesn't work. So it's a word, like this kind of has to be an E, doesn't it? Because there's a word break, S blank R. Could be an O, I guess.
gust of air. Neckwear could be ties. It's weird that it would be pluralized, though. Stra. No, because this has to. It has to be a vowel. Gust of air. Attacks. What are we supposed to do with attacks? It's so weird. I feel like we're supposed to, like, loosely, loosely. We're supposed to rearrange something, right? Rearrange something that means attacks? I don't know. I think I'm out of ideas. I'm going to have to start asking for help. Can't quite get to the end on my own. I think I did okay, though. It's... Okay, so it's not ALS, but everything else was right. That's interesting. Huh. Well, I'm not sure what else it should be. What is this letter? So we have this noodle. Still don't know. Oh, your bean is your noodle, I guess. I said brain, but I didn't go far enough. Um, and there must be someone named Ben Kingsley, I guess, gobbling A. Yeah, I guess once I once I saw this was N, I could have put an A in here. Because I had this idea of gobbling A. And the only place to put it once I had this E was it has to go here. And that might have made me question ALs. Maybe I could have come up with Bean? I don't know. But I think that would have been a way forward that I should have considered. I? I have no idea what that could mean. Oh, what's that doing at the end of a word, right? Baseball division. Oh, innings! I was thinking of the wrong kind of oh, beginnings. I think of the wrong kind of baseball division. So uh, to appeal to something is to beg, beg innings. Okay. How about this one? Don't know. Gust of air. I just, I don't know what's going on here. Windsor. Ah, yes, Windsor. A Windsor knot or a, is like a typical way you tie a tie. Wind is a gust of air. 
attacks. Huh. Is this ties somehow? Yes. Oh, I even talked about sortie earlier when I was thinking about this screw pines thing. Uh, sorties, if someone engages in a sortie, they attack. So sorties means attacks. A gust of air is wind. Wind sorties and Windsor ties. Okay, we have a W now. Oh, a witch is an evil woman in a horror movie, just in general. Trumpet blast? Blair Witch. I didn't realize that I was supposed to mishear something. Announced. Trumpet Blast that announced? Did not mean Trumpet Blast announced? What is this word that doing here? I, I don't like it at all. Yeah, I mean, definitely Blair Witch was... An evil woman in a horror movie, I guess. I never saw it. You'll be surprised to learn. Uh, black, sorry, back story recited. Tale? Like, I thought of that before, but elat doesn't mean anything, does it? Look up that word, by the way, a lot. Well, the first entries in Google search are not dictionary entries, so it probably is not a word. A lot. This is the name of some obscure town. Okay. So probably not then. Back story recite told. If you recited something, you told it maybe. So it's nothing to do with back though, or story. I don't think. Ah, oh, it is tail. I was spelling it wrong. Recited is an or not a mishearing indicator that I didn't notice. I didn't see that possibility. So a a story recited would be a tale. If you said it, someone told me a tale, you might think they said I told you a tale, right? Um, and then back is tale, sure. Burgundies. Okay, so what's this about? Town clothes that aren't mount meant to show. Oh, so a burg is a town, and undies are clothes that aren't meant to show. Okay. Chianti is a red. It's a red wine. So what does this have to do with Appalachian timber? Oh, it is. It is a part of... I, I thought part of Appalachian... I don't know. I thought it couldn't be part of Appalachian timber because I was so sure timber was the definition and A was part of the wordplay. I feel like they should have removed the A here, but mm, I don't know. Maybe Chianti isn't just red, it's A red. Maybe. Anyway, so uh, if we look here, you see Chianti. So that's that's what the part of Appalachian Timber was all about. Okay, not too bad a performance. Had to ask for checking once or twice. Just can well once when I first gave up and got this whole thing. And then uh, five letters, not too bad. I'm I'm happy enough with this. Hope you guys were happy too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.